Welcome to Easy Elim Learning Simplified. So today we are going to be looking at the topic metals and we're going to be looking at the extraction of zinc and in the extraction of zinc we're going to look at the steps that are carried out to extract zinc and some of the properties of zinc. So zinc as uh, the main oils of zinc is zinc bled and calamine. So you see us using zinc bled a lot in our uh, extraction and how we can be able to test the presence of zinc ion in an ore sample just like we did before but, uh, the ore is crushed and we had hydrochloric acid or nitric acid this helps to remove the impurities and then the solution is filtered and you're left with a solution containing zinc ion so this filtrate is added to two different test tubes and each test tube one we add sodium hydroxide dropwise until excess, and then the one we add ammonia solution dropwise and excess. So zinc is also unique when it's react to sodium hydroxide because of its amphoteric nature. So it's going to form a white precipitate when you add a few drops with sodium hydroxide, which dissolves in excess. Uh, and then with the ammonium hydroxide, it forms a white precipitate as well which is also soluble in excess. So you notice zinc is a bit unique uh, in all other metals. Of course, the other ones that give other results, but zinc in both sodium hydroxide and uh, ammonia solution will form precipitates and dissolve in excess. Uh, so in the extraction, it's usually done by electrolysis or reduction. So we are going to discuss both uh, ways. So the steps that occur before that is concentration by froth flotation. So the ore is roasted in air to convert it into an oxide. Remember for zinc uh, blend, for example, it's zinc sulfide. So the zinc reacts with oxygen to form zinc oxide and the sulfur reacts with oxygen to form the sulfur oxide. And then the carbonate is decomposed to form zinc oxide and carbon oxide. So they usually extracted by either reduction or electrolysis. So when we talk about reduction, we definitely are going to have a blast furnace. So this is a blast furnace that is used in the extraction of zinc. So the oxide is mixed with coke. You can see coke is also uh, the raw material in this case, which was similar with extraction of iron, because we know coke helps us to get carbon monoxide, which is the main producing agent. And then the limestone also produces carbon four oxide that is also used to make the carbon two oxide. So the carbon oxide formed is used to remove the impurities. So calcium carbonate is heated to form calcium oxide and carbon four oxide, which reacts with carbon to form our main impurity, as we have said. So the resulting carbon two oxide and coke are the reducing agents in the furnace and they reduce it at around 1400 degrees Celsius. So they reduce the oxide to the metal which is liberated in vapor form. It's so the temperatures are so high and the melting point of zinc is so low. So it is actually reduced and it's uh, deposited in gaseous form. So it goes up, up in the furnace as, as a gas. So when it goes up in the furnace as a gas, it usually settles uh, above the molten lid. So there is molten lid that is splashed. You can see the splashes in the setup. So molten lid is usually splashed over zinc vapor to condense it. So it also helps the zinc not to reoxidize. That's why it's a very good way of condensation. So the resulting zinc is usually around 99% pure and can be further Divided by distillation. Sulfur four oxide is one of the impurities. You can see why, because remember we had like zinc bled, we had sulfide, sulfur in it. Uh, and then it's the sulfur four oxide can either be used in the manufacture of sulfuric acid or it can be used, it can be scraped off by using um, scrubbers like calcium uh, hydroxide. So the less volatile impurities remain in the furnace and the common ones are silica ones, just like in the iron, which react with calcium oxide to form calcium silicate. And the calcium silicate together with the other impurities, they form slag at the bottom. You can see the slag at the bottom of the furnace, which is run off. 
So that was just the uh, reduction. It's not that complicated. You just need to do the reducing agent. And then after that, you're able to reduce and see how now our zinc is obtained. Don't forget the function of the molten lead. And then for the electrolysis now of zinc, zinc is obtained from the oxide via a series of steps. We start preparation of electrolyte, which first happens by roasting the hole and it's converted by to zinc sulfate. This is what we are going to use the electrolyte zinc sulfate. And it's done so by reacting with dilute sulfuric acid, as you can see in the equation. So any lead 2 oxide uh, present is going to form a white precipitate. We know lead sulfate is insoluble. So zinc, the zinc sulfate is dissolved in water and the solution is electrolyzed. So we need to know the anode and the cathode. So the anode is usually aluminium sheet, the cathode is lead. So we are not using inert electrodes, we are using the ones that are not inert because we want to have a better preferential discharge. So at the cathode, we have some deposits of a gray solid that tells you zinc ions are discharged or are preferred uh, at the cathode. Remember at the cathode, we want the one that has a higher tendency of gaining electrons. Zinc is has a higher tendency of losing in comparison to hydrogen, but it is preferred uh, because of even the uh, electrodes that has been used. So zinc ions will gain the two electrons to form zinc solid. Uh, if graphite electrodes were used, hydrogen gas would be used. You see now where using specific electrodes helps in the process. And then at the anode, we, are, we produce uh, oxygen gas. This is because we have hydroxyl ions and sulfate. So OH ions will always be preferred because of the high potential, uh, electrode potential, so it has a higher tendency to lose electrons. So some of the physical properties of zinc is it's a blue-gray blue metal with a density of around 7.1 grams per centimeter cube. It melts at 420 degrees Celsius and it boils at 907 degrees Celsius. It reacts with air to form an oxide layer of zinc oxide or basic carbonate, where zinc oxide reacts with carbon oxide to form zinc carbonate. It usually burns with a blue-green flame in oxygen and forms zinc oxide, which is yellow and hot and white when cold. This is from one work. You can go back and check reaction of metals in air. It reacts with water, but doesn't react with water. It actually reacts with zinc. This also goes back into the reactivity of metals. As you go down the reactivity series, the metals do not react with water, but with steam, it becomes easier. So it reacts with steam to form zinc oxide and hydrogen gas is given off. And then with dilute acids, it's zinc is above hydrogen, the reactivity series, so it can actually react with acids to form, uh, if it's sulfuric acid, it will form zinc sulfate and hydrogen gas. If it's hydrochloric acid, it's going to form zinc chloride and hydrogen gas. So pure zinc reacts slowly, so we shall use copper 2 sulfate. You notice copper 2 sulfate is a very common uh, catalyst used in reaction. So with concentrated acid, zinc reacts with concentrated sulfuric acid to form zinc sulfate and sulfur oxide and water. And with 50% nitric acid, it forms nitrogen 2 oxide, water, and zinc nitrate. With concentrated nitric acid, it forms nitrogen 4 oxide, zinc nitrate, and water. You can see the difference between the two. And this also reminds us on the preparation of nitrogen 2 oxide and nitrogen 4 oxide in uh, nitrogen and its compounds. You can remind yourself and go and check that video. So with alkalis, since it is amphoteric, it reacts with sodium hydroxide to form sodium zincate. So we have the zincate ion, and it also burns in chlorine to give uh, zinc chloride and also, it combines with sulfur to form zinc sulfide. Some of the uses of zinc is it's used in galvanization of iron sheets. We have, we have discussed rusting and prevention of rusting in Form 1. You can go and check that out as well. It's used to make a brass alloy. This is an alloy of copper and zinc. 
and then it is also used to make the outer casings of dry batteries uh, it's used to make dye casings that contain zinc and aluminium that are used to making radio and car parts it's also used to make a uh, zinc cyanide used for remining silver and gold so this brings us to the end of extraction of zinc so you can go back and check so zinc is extracted by electrolysis and also by reduction so this forms a very unique uh, metal so it can be commonly be tested in our exams so check out for more questions in the site uh, so that you can go to practice so see you in the next lesson